realizing the physics of when you change like the screws on the club or you flip our gravity core or you change the cog setting on the face plane. If you do that stuff, I want you guys to know what's actually happening, what actually causes that. Okay, what actually causes the change in ball flight. You know? And why sometimes if you change it, it won't cause a change in ball flight. You know, if you understand how the adjustments are really working, it's easier for you to fit yourself, it's easier for you to work with your students, it's, it makes everything a lot, a lot easier to figure out. It doesn't get as confusing. With all the adjustments now on drivers, it's easy to kind of chase your tail around in circles. Well, let me add one degree aloft and put a little toe down and put a different shaft in it and move the screw over here. I mean, unless you understand what each of those little adjustments is doing, it's really hard to, to figure out what you're, to have an understanding of what you're doing. Okay. To get a feel for this. So that's important. Um, one thing I want to make sure that you guys don't walk away, thank you, that you don't walk away with the assumption that when we talk about whether it's moving the little mechanism on the, this back end, or whether it's moving heavier or lighter screws to the corners of the club this way, we're doing the same thing essentially, right? Right. Is that when you're moving, let's say we put the, the heavier weight on the toe, or we move that thing toward the toe, it's not it's not the closure weight. And a lot of people think we put, you put more weight on the toe, and the, the toe is hanging back or something. And that's what causes the fade. And that's not really what's causing the fade. What's really causing more of the fade or less draw is that if I put weight over here, then I'm taking the center of gravity, I'm moving the center of gravity over there. Right? The distribution of weight has moved toward because I put more weight on the toe. So that center point, that balance point, that center of gravity of weight has moved toward the toe. Now the center of gravity, when it moves toward the toe, you're also doing what? You're also moving the sweet spot because they are the, the sweet spot is defined by where the center of gravity is. So if I move the center of gravity to the toe, I'm moving the sweet spot toward the toe. Okay. Now if I if if you hit it, if I if you deliver it zeroed out perfectly, zero angle attack, zero path angle, right in the center of the face, right in the center of gravity. Right, then you hit a straight shot, zero spin axis, doesn't curve, right, no side spin. If you suddenly hit on the toe, what? It wants to draw, right? If you've done everything, if you've done everything the same, delivered it totally neutral, but you hit on the toe, it's gonna to wanna to draw because of the gear effect. Because now you're hitting the ball over here, but the sweet spot's over here, so it goes, or the center gravity's over here, so it goes like that, okay? Well, what if you hit on the toe, but I also move the center gravity toward the toe? Then nothing's happened, right? right? You're gonna hit it straight again because I've moved the sweet spot over where you're hitting the ball. Or, if you keep hitting the ball in the center, I move the sweet spot toward the toe. Now you're actually hitting it on the heel, aren't you? Yeah. Even though your hit location hasn't changed, I move the sweet spot over here now. So even though it looks like you're hitting the center of the face, you're really hitting it on the heel. So if the center gravity is over here, and you hit it in the center, it goes like that. So it's when you move the mass properties around, you're just changing the center of gravity of the ball and the club and how they collide with each other. It's all about the collision. And the nice thing is, how much are we moving? And I say I'm moving over here. No, you're really moving it like that much. You remember a very, very small amount. Even one dimple over is enough to add like 200 yards of size. That's if you did everything zero, like zeroed out, face angle square, and everything. You hit one dimple to the toe, 300 yards of size. So I don't have to move the CG much to get those shifts, to get that ball curving right to left. Okay? Now, the same, does that all make sense? Yeah. It's how the clubs are hitting each other and what's happening when they hit off center. Off, the center of gravity is offset to each other. Makes the club spin, great spin on the ball. It literally works like a gear. Right? It's a yeah. gear. It's a gear. Yeah. It's a gear. Yeah. And so that's what's doing it. It's not how fast you're closing it, or there's weight on the toe, so it's harder for me to square the face up. It's not that. Is there some of that? There might be a microscopic amount of that. That as you move the center of gravity this way, the longitudinal center of gravity gets this way, that there's a longer lever arm, and that, yeah, it may affect your closure rate just a very, very tiny bit of it. But not to the extent that the offset does, just moving the CG in relation to where the ball's hitting the face. That's what's doing all of it. Okay, or 99.9% of it. So having said that, that's what's happening when we take this screw, this tube. All we're doing is we're doing the same thing we've done here yeah, or there, we're just doing it vertically, right? So if you hit it, if I had the center of gravity here, in this, which is sweet spot now, and you hit it there, you're gonna get whatever launch and spin the loft gives you at your delivery angles. If I move the center of gravity down here and you still hit it up here, It'll now you're gonna get, yeah, now you're gonna get less spin. Because you're, even though you're hitting in the center, the center of gravity's down here, you're actually crowning it. Technically, you're hitting it higher on the face. If I move the center of gravity up here and you hit the ball in the center, now you're hitting it thin. Compared to the CG, not compared to the face, compared to the CG, which, which, which is what matters. A lot of people get confused by that. They think lower CG, you're going to spin it more. Or, or, they, they, yeah, they think the opposite. It higher, but so they're thinking, okay, well, I'm Yeah, if I move the CG low, the ball's going to go higher. Yeah. But really, you move the CG down, maybe you increase the launch a quarter degree, but you drop 500 RPMs of spin, the ball actually noses off this way. Right? That's where Eric, we were talking about the muscle back and irons can actually tend to spin more right. than like um, 
the game improvement because the siege is lower in the game improvement. Yeah, there was the thread where somebody was talking about the stronger lofts and clubs. But, yeah. Yeah. And also, you have to realize when you're talking about irons versus wood, it's how close the CG is to the face, right? So if I get the center gravity way back here, then I have a longer distance between the face and that CG, so I get much greater effect, right? Because there's that the longer radius. Okay. All right, but if I move the CG around the face, it's like a seesaw now. It's not like a merry-go-round. Back here, it's like a merry-go-round. But now, if I put the, the pivot point around the face, it's like a seesaw. So if you hit on the toe, it's more like the toe is falling away. So you get even the small amount, like a, a truly a muscle back, you probably get very little gear back. You know, super game improvement iron, you get a little bit because the CG is further off the face. But it depends on the distance. The more the CG goes back, the more gear effect you're going to get. That's why if you get a golf club where you have a lot of rotation, right, you have to maybe put a little bit more bulge and roll on it. If you get a club that's very stable, high moment inertia, you don't get that as much. You don't get as much rotation, so you don't need as much bulge and roll. Because the bulge and roll is designed, the only reason it's designed, a lot of people think the curve, that's the curve on the face. A lot of people think the curve causes the gear effect. The, the curve is designed to minimize the gear effect. Because yeah, there's gear effect on irons. Right. You know, if you, yeah, right. So if you, if you, if, if you had a flat face, the same configuration but a flat face, and you hit on the toe, it snaps across, I mean, it literally snaps into the fence. Because the face is straight, and you put, and that combined with the club spin this way, put so much hook spin on it. So what you try to do is fool the ball. If you hit on the toe, if you have the face curved, the ball is thinking you're hitting it with a little bit of an open face. Okay. So it doesn't it doesn't have as much of a pronounced a, a pronounced gear effect to the left, and it starts the ball a little bit to the right. Okay. And in a perfect world, what you're trying to do, well, if the guy rig zeroes it out and hits it a half inch toward the toe, there's just enough bulge that the ball starts right center and draws the center. That hardly ever happens, but that's kind of that's kind of the baseline you use to determine what kind of radius of bulge and roll that you you want. You know, and it's gonna that bulge and roll is gonna change based on as what aesthetics people like to look at. That's part of it, but most of it is the radius of that gyration, the radius of that rotation of the club when it's struck off center. So, but that's what's happening when you're changing these weights around. You're offsetting the center gravity of the club and the center gravity of the ball. Um, now these adjustments, these face plane, this is just basically making the face look like this, right? That's what this is doing. It doesn't predict beforehand. Like if you if you hit it kind of roughly the same place in the face, and if I move the center of gravity, I can kind of predict that I mean, a little less draw or a little more draw. But if we set the face a certain way, I don't I don't necessarily know, or the line angle, I don't necessarily know you're going to deliver it back that way. Right. You know, if the line angle sits a certain way, where are you going to deliver the handle? I'm not really sure, but it's just going to be a trend one way or the other. With the loft, kind of the same thing. I could add loft, and you could de loft in your swing, but it's likely that you'll probably not change much. You'll probably get some higher launch and spin. So that's a little bit less predictive than probably moving the weight around inside the head, but but that's the components, that's the physics, the cause and effect, not about closure rate, about the two objects colliding with each other.